So as we go on with our project, I'm just noting out, the, uh, just pointing out that uh, just because you are seeing me use uh, these uh, construction grids, that does not mean that this is uh, the only the, the the only procedure that you have to follow when you are working in Revit. But for me, I find that uh, these construction grids make it is make it easy for me to be able to place the the, the, the load bearing walls uh, for my uh, model because what I am planning to do is uh, to have at the intersection of these uh, grids will have my load bearing let's say columns and uh, running through these uh, grids will have my load bearing walls so that's just a process that I have developed by, for myself, which works conveniently for me. And I'm hoping that as we continue working on this project, and as you continue practicing on your own, you are going to develop your own uh, ways of conveniently working on uh, your own project in Revit. So as we go on, that should be, or rather, that should be the case that you should be aware that I'm showing you my process not to say that this is the only way that you can uh, follow or rather this is the only procedure that you can use to come up with a, a building model in uh, Revit I've just noticed that uh, we had not saved our project and we, we might need to save our project so that in case anything happens, we are not going to lose our data and the process that we have gone through. So I'll go to file up here. And we have an option of uh, save. And it's going to open uh, this um, uh, file explorer. And I'm going to locate... Let's say in my desktop, I have um, files, uh, Revit files, Revit project files. And I want to call this Revit 2019 tutorial. So it's going to be, the project name is uh, Revit 2019 tutorial. That is the project name. And then we have the files of type is going to be a project file which is going to have a .rvt file extension. So you have other a .rte file extension, which is for a template file. In this case, is a Revit project file. So it's going to be a .rvt file extension. And then we click on Save. And you're going to see the name of that project is going to appear at the top here where we have Autodesk Revit 2019. Right now we have Revit 2019 tutorial floor plan, ground floor. And that is uh, because we have opened the, the plan, rather we have opened the project and we are working on the ground floor plan. So that's it with that. I want to start putting in place the walls and I'll start with the, with the external load bearing walls. So under the architecture tab here, I'll click on wall. And when that is uh, activated in the properties panel, so this, this is the properties panel. Eh? We have these uh, options or other properties. Right now we have a base wall generic 200 mm selected if you click on this drop down we're going to have uh, these types of walls we have a generic 150 mm masonry wall we have generic 200 mm wall we have generic 200 mm field so these are uh, the various uh, predefined wall profiles that we can use and if we want to create our own, we can just select one of these and then make some adjustments. In this case, I want to select generic, and then click on edit type, which is going to take me to where we have type properties for this system family. 
a basic wall eh? and the other types are available on uh, clicking on this uh, drop down arrow here which is going to show all these types that uh, we have here in this case let's say you want to have an exterior wall let's just have um, the generic that we have like that but in this case okay in this case under type parameters eh, we have the structure and uh, we have stuff like function of this wall we have some uh, uh, parameters for graphics materials and finishes analytical data we have uh, uh, identity data we have uh, yeah just that so under structure if you click on edit you're going to see the assembly uh, in place this gives us uh, the sample height of the wall and the material compositions here where we have the exterior side and the interior side so here we have the core boundaries in place you will have to now place your materials in these layers here and when you're done you have options for uh, accepting the customizations that you will have done so in this case let's say we are not changing anything we'll come back to that later in the project we'll uh, click on ok and then click on ok here get back to our project and then start placing our walls eh? because that uh, that wall already is uh, selected but before we do that i think here we have in terms of height eh? We have a height which is uh, we should be connected, I think, uh, because uh, as as we have the case here, so the base constraint of this uh, wall is our ground floor, right? But the top constraint is not indicated, and I want to change this top constraint to let's say the roof level. What that means is, eh, uh, let's get to le like an elevation viewpoint here, and I'll show you what that means. So all we are saying is, this wall that we are creating, top constraint is going to be here, which is, we've said roof level, so that is the top part where that is linked, and then the bottom constraint is going to be your ground level because it's going to be running from ground to roof level and the height will be 3000 eh, millimeters so if you get back to that we have our wall selected ground floor as the base constraint and the top constraint is up to uh, roof level so that is in order our wall runs from a uh, grid uh, C1 here. C1 is this up to here and then moves all the way up to A9. So A9 is here. Back to to C9 there. Then moving all the way back to where we started, like that. Again, we have an extension from this point up to that point of the same wall. And uh, we have another wall uh, running from C8 through D8 up to D2. C8 is here, up to there, D2 is here, and then this runs back to that point. So those are our external walls. I want to have uh, a small wall here, extending by 100, and I want to have another wall here, extending by 
100 so if you want to modify anything you just click on uh, this and move it towards that side so we'll have like there we'll have 200 that will be part of what i'm going to use as a pair the same with this i'm going to click on it pull it outwards to 200 and also pull this one outwards to to snap at at some point at that point and those are now going to be our external walls the next step after that is going to be to put in place or model in place the interior walls of our project and they are going to be a little bit different from external walls because we want to have uh, uh, different uh, parameters for this wall and one of these uh, one of these major differences is going to be in terms of the thicknesses of these walls so our external walls were of 200 mm thickness and i want the internal walls to be 150 millimeter thick so in this case under the architecture tab if i click on wall i want to be able to come back here and uh, properties click on the drop down there and i can be able to look for a wall that uh, is of the same thickness that i want to use so like here we have generic 150 mm uh, millimeter thick mason wall i can click on uh, that so this wall is a uh, base constraint is at the ground floor top constraint is up to let's see the roof level so that is a uh, well set so we start putting in place the internal walls and there is one that runs from grid 3 here uh, from here to here running all the way up to grid 7 and then moving back to that wall and um, is from grid 3 yes here we have grid 5 grid 6 we have partitions there so grid 5 and 6 is this we have a partition so make sure it's at the center here place that and we have another wall there like that so the the one that runs from this grid uh, a6 runs from a6 to c6 so click on modify select this and drag up to this point where it is going to intersect with that wall click away to place it and then we have a separation for this room eh, in uh, grid 4 that moves up to from 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 grid the uh, d4 intersection of d4 to the intersection of b4 and that point is here so you have the wall again selected architectural and is from here to here so that is it so click away escape you'll have that wall placed as you can see so these walls are allowing us to create the various rooms that we're going to start using.